first person singular views expressed are those of the author. Lori Korn states, a house can have a soul. In the 50s, our ranch-style California home in Toledo appeared like a monopoly piece on a tree-arched street, a Buick in the driveway, two elms in front, and a dog in the lilac-fenced backyard. Thirty-five years passed, and my father, now a widower near eighty, decided to sell the house. The six children who grew up in it came from all over the country. The soul of the house on Drummond Road had lived protected all those years, buried in the cedar chest in the attic full of baby clothes, hidden between the heritage classics on the bookshelf, in the folds of the flowered curtains, in the light slanting through the reed curtains of the den. All these things give a house a soul, not even to mention the people living there. The last night my brother and I stayed up till dawn stuffing things in boxes, the waffle irons, shot glasses, mom's dish towels, the bust of Lenin. The house was quaking, shaking loose all the trinkets, and we were catching tiny objects as they fell. It was apocalypse, the end of childhood. Morning came. Without the house on Drummond Road, six children would take with them their private and collective memories and try not to look back. Although I wasn't there to see it, I imagine that on the day the house was emptied and my father moved out, the house took a deep breath, and when he closed the door, it shuddered and sighed, and the soul of our home wafted out the windows and drifted in ribbons to the winds. <sighs> Lori Korn is a writer living in Santa Cruz. If you would like to share your opinion or stories, send 240 words to First Person Singular at ksqd.org. This program was produced by the late Marty Glenn Marshall and Matilda Rand. <laughs>